What's going on guys? It's Tuesday, January 29th, and this episode is brought to you by Division Street Auto. Uh, if you need any kind of work done on your car, mechanical, or whatnot, Division Street Auto will definitely, definitely take care of you. Hit up my man George. He's such a great guy. He's known in the community as a gentle guy, and he's honest. Uh, you can find them at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket. Uh, their number is 401-723-7080. Also, this is brought to you by AJ Drywall and Plaster. If you need anything done regarding drywall and plaster, they will hook you up. Uh, from ceiling layovers to finished basements, they do homes, rehabs, additions, storefronts, commercial, acoustical ceilings, pretty much everything. Anything that you need done when it comes to uh, drywall and plaster, please contact them. They will answer all your questions and concerns that you might have. They really base their business on customer satisfaction 100%. And you can find them on Facebook and Google or give them a call 401-323-9252. Talk to my man, Joseph Lafort. He's the man. Love you, Joe. Top showroom and gallery for all your light fixturing needs. They do outdoor lighting, landscaping, kitchen and bath, LED, ceiling fans, dining rooms, they do all styles and trends, on-site consultation, uh, field and house calls, and very, very specific attention to detail. This is Top sh Showroom and Gallery in Providence, Rhode Island at 120 Point Street. You can call them at 401-861-0695. With any of them, if you mention the, that you heard this ad, on the J2 podcast, they'll give you a discount. All right, here we go. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared podcast. Here we go. So we're going. Thanks uh, for tuning in. We had a stressful hour or so of technical difficulties, but our, you know, our man took care of it. George, thank you for hooking us up. We got Will with us here today. Obviously, Jay, the huge, and there goes the, uh, the spiely part of the show. What's up? What's, What's up? going on? Thank you for having me. Without well, thank you for coming, man. So, well, not to sound like, uh, you know, too. I don't know radio show but tell us a little bit about what you do i know that you uh obviously you coach my son for his whole football career try town to titans <coughs> join up town titans man a lot, a lot of fun good organization so if anybody's out there that does have kids that you know want to play football registration's open check them out <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i mean uh the, these guys know my kids play sports but and uh i don't know if they knew that you were their coach but his kid is a beast yeah he is he was our quarterback this what year what position does he play Quarterback. Oh, the quarterback. You Running back. <laughs> linebacker. <laughs> wherever we needed. Really? Yeah, wherever we needed him. Dude, you got a star quarterback on your hands? That's, that's awesome, awesome genetics, bro. Genetics, dude. What do you mean? Genetics. <laughs> genetics. He, no, he's yeah. it's very, very, you know, I've coached a long time. Yeah. And, and to see a, a child be a natural all-around athlete is probably the most rewarding thing that you can see. And his son has it. Awesome. Cool, thanks. He had a wrestling tournament. Do you train him? Like, like, do you? Yeah, we work with him. He, oh, he yeah, always yeah. wants. He just wants to practice all the time. You know, if uh, if the weather's nice, he wants to be outside, just play catch, practice throwing, whatever he wants nice. to do. Nice. He's got stuff you can't teach. Right. Yeah, like he, just that drive, kind of like that animal instinct, kind of. And, and just uh, physical. Like I mean, when he drops back, the shoulder comes up ninety degrees. Like. Right. It's either by watching something or it's it's na it's natural. It's natural. Some kids you really have to teach and, and you really gotta go through the motions. Some kids just pick it up and you're like, wow. And he is one of those kids. Now is that your oldest one My or your younger? Yeah. My youngest oh. is probably quite the opposite. That's pretty as cool. As far as just like raw athleticism, speed and agility, the yeah. youngest one has that. The brains and the understanding of the game, we're working on that. You know, yeah, we're he's still really young, too. We're, we're trying. Yeah, but even Steven, though, when he was young, he kind of picked it up real quick. He watched yeah. football all the time. Carter just wants to run and yell. You know, he doesn't. Listen, siblings are always completely like a grunk, different. You 
Yeah. He's like a Gronk, and Steven's more like a like an Edelman. Yeah. Understands it a Smart. little more. Smart. Interesting. Well, Carter's not dumb. I didn't say he was dumb. Well, so how long have you been uh, coaching <laughs> football? Did you play uh, when you were younger? Did no. You, no? How did you get into coaching? Like, that's such a, right, normally. That's such a what, Jay? Well, I'm saying, like, normally. <laughs> Listen, I graduated <laughs> senior <laughs> year 119, 5'9". At such an old age, how did you get into coaching? <laughs> No, I was going to say a lot of people play, and then they, they kind of fall into it because they played, so, you know, whatever, and they, mm. you know, that kind of thing. It's, so when my play. kids were young, my father coached me in soccer. Right. So in baseball, uh, mostly soccer. So um, when my kids got to the uh, the age of sports, I naturally wanted to go and coach. And I'm um, sweet. You know, I, I have the patience for that young age. I was going to say, it takes a, a certain Bro. personality. My, my son's probably had about five or six coaches throughout his life, whether it was... You know, football, basketball, baseball. He's the best, dude. Thank he you. really were. Like, just patient with him, never got emotional with him. And he was a really good coach. I, you know, what what's, I think when, when you look at coaching in a, okay, I can deal with all the children and I can deal with the families. Right. Right. You also have to have the ability to either be a good coach for the sport right at three and four well at three and four right soccer it's like herding squirrels right they all go to the ball <laughs> and they run and they have a good time and you don't count how many people score and it's just like right. having a great time nobody's keeping position right right they're just kind of you're trying to i guess control mayhem right as they start getting older they have to start learning the sport right mm -hmm. right so uh flag was a great entrance for me to um, work with the kids in a new sport, because soccer I did for quite a long time, but football is more of a passion of mine. I love watching football. I never played it in high school or in Pop Warner or anything. Um, you're, you're a big guy. I mean, like, uh, it's kind of, <laughs> you know, shocking. Yeah, I didn't grow until I was like 23, 24. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you've only been this big for about five years now. That's it. Oh, man. Yeah. Looking good. So <laughs> I, I was really fortunate that the, the league asked me to kind of take a – uh, a, a, a head coach position um, just for the fact of being able to deal with everything outside of the team as well right and I was very fortunate enough to get um, a coach who wanted to be the offensive line coordinator who played in um, not amateur football like semi-pro semi-pro hmm. played for uh, some team in <coughs> Connecticut and then my uh, defensive coach was more of, um, you know, he's been coaching for a long time. He comes from a baseball background, um, but he's really smart, and it just kind of worked. And it was we were a little bit at a disadvantage this year because everybody we ha we only you know like football kind of they grow up with the age. Um, so our, the, way, the way it works is that you, an age group is two years, so you'll. Ready? Is that your son? Yeah. Look at oh, that sure, arm, ninety that. degree. Yeah. <laughs> Not too shabby. That's yeah, your so youngest or your old? That's oh, my oldest. Older. That was uh, actually an indoor flag league. Yeah, if you're on the book, bro, especially if you're on, look whose page he's on. You're on his wife's page. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> came came oh up God, and searching your, your, your son. <laughs> my wife is also, my wife, my wife yeah. is deleted. Oh, uh, delete that page. So. <laughs> it's like a picture of his wife. There's my son. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. No, so, um, Mailman story. So with youth football in, in that organization, they go up every two years, so... One year, you're going to be younger than everybody else on the team. The next year, you're going to be older than everybody else. Quick, hmm. ma quick maps. But, you know, so when he says that they were at a disadvantage, the majority of that team was the younger group. Coming up from flag. Oh. So yeah. first year in pads. Right. So, it w like, we didn't win very many games. I think we might have won one or two. One, I think we won one in time. At that yeah. age, at that level, is... Are, is winning important, or is it more, it's like you important. said earlier, like, you know... It's always important. You think we want to fucking raise losers, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's winning important? No, what I'm saying is that, you know, is, is it more like, all right, like you said earlier, kind of like mayhem a little bit. I mean, I know you're transitioning, right, at that so, point? Or? So the squirrel would be more like flag, all right, because okay. we want right. them to go down the field. Yeah. Now you have hitting. So now you have to make sure, like, awareness is there. Right. So nobody gets steamrolled. You know, you're going to have kids that don't like contact. Right. What do you do with them? Everybody's yeah, what do play. you do with them? What do you do with like the new, you know, the upcoming generation? I'm all about like, safety. Ugh. I'm not going to put your child, even though you might want him in for you know the whole hour. Yeah. It, you know, it's not going to happen. You know, until I can see that he's going to be able to protect himself out there. Right. Because I don't want at the end of the day your kid 
concussed. Do you coach any wusses? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Such a... What are their dad's names, too? Yeah. <laughs> Give me their dad's name. No, I don't want to know their dad's name. I want to know if there's any wusses that are out there. I, I, like, was, you know, pretty, bro, of no, I, was, I was pretty proud of all the kids that gave effort this year. Nice. And that's not like a political way to say it. I mean, I saw kids that didn't want to touch nothing to, like, grabbing legs at the last game. So you, right. you see that growth. And that's cool. You know, and, and you just got to... That's really what it's about, too, is seeing them progress over the course of the year. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want to... You're a direct wanna... reflection of your coaching. Right. Right? Yeah. Big loser this year. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing. What was that record again? <laughs> They're all thinking about quitting. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I always... Um, and I say I'm not even a coach, and it gets it can get irritating to me when I'm sure there are a lot of parents that think their kid is a superstar. Of course. And wants them in. And like my son, you know, played play baseball. And he started to get good, but there was a long time where he sucked, you know, and it wasn't a question of, you know, it wasn't, the situation was never me going to the coach saying, hey, let him play some more, let him play some more. It's, hey, dude, if, like, if you want to play some more, we have to practice. We've got to hit the batting cages. You have to throw baseballs. You know, there's only one way you're going to get better. It's become better. Right. It, it's not by going out there in the game and making the coach let you play in that situation. Right. So, you know, he, he works and get, got better. But when I would go watch him, you know, play football games, there's... You know, you, you hear it. There's just a lot of chatter. Parents complain about their kids not getting enough playing time, but don't want to take those steps to work with them away from the field. How do you handle, you know, that? Like, what's a conversation you might have? If, if my son... Oh, I've had parents really, come into oh, to Big Bear to have conversations. I'm sure Big you tell them straight what's up. Big Bear? What's Big Bear? Uh, Big Bear is the hunting and fishing uh, shop that me and my business partner own. So ultimately, your place of work. My place of work, yes. Your place of business. So parents are coming in there saying, hey... Well, are they also buying guns and ammunition and hunting equipment and all that Oh, yeah, stuff? like Big Bear is like a community store. Like right, We okay. sell hunting and fishing stuff. So even if your kid wants to go fishing and spring trout type stuff, parents are coming in. Right. Um, and I've had them come in and not even want to talk about or the conversation of football doesn't even come up. I might bring it up. Like, hey, we got to practice this week. How's he, how's he looking for the week? He was a little shooken up last week. He yeah. seemed like he didn't want to. You know, at the end of the day. That's a beautiful so that that just paints a beautiful small town image to me, man. Oh, Gloucester's the best. Th something about that. I feel like growing up in the city, I, I only saw that stuff on TV, and I always thought that that would be a really cool way to live. You know, like hmm. pretty much everybody that walks in your store, you, you know, know them. You know, yeah, you they know, know you. Them. That's that's a cool thing. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, no, of, you're absolutely continue. right. So I don't mind having those conversations, like even though I'm not wearing my coach hat, you know, I'm wearing right. my, my Big Bear hat. Well, essentially, aren't you always kind of wearing your coach hat? As, if as oh, long yeah. as you have, as long as the parents have access to you to some right. degree, right? If they call you on the phone, all of a sudden your coach hat comes out. So, exactly. You know, it's like the same with me and my kids. Like I, for, I always have the dad hat on. Right. You know, like I, I try and just be like, "Hey, I'm not your dad for a minute." He's like, "Yeah, you are." What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Allegedly. Well, it's Allegedly. like my wife. My <laughs> wife is a phenomenal photographer. Yeah. But she can't take pictures of our own kids. <laughs> Look at the kid. He's, you know, George is a G. Huh? He's got he's got her whole album up in the back. Right. Yeah. So the kid, you know, sometimes when you coach your kid, your kid only gets to a certain point, and then he doesn't right. want to listen to you anymore. But if a complete stranger says, "Hey, drop and do ten push-ups," all of a sudden they're doing. It's, it's doing interesting how that works, isn't it? You know, and people have asked me like, "Oh, why don't you coach?" And I feel like I don't want him getting used and getting comfortable to having me on the field to turn to all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like if I'm out there on the field. Don't they turn to like, you off the field? <laughs> but when it's football time, like there's going to be times in a, in a young man's life where he's going to have to listen to other people in authority. You know what I mean? So I and you're going to be tough. Like, yeah, I feel, I feel like if I'm on the field with them, they're going to anytime they need something or they have a question, they're going to bypass every other coach, maybe three or four coaches, and come to dad. Right. You know, and I don't want them to always have that like safety net to just be like, "That's my dad. That's who I'm going to." I want them to get used and understand. Somebody else. To, Right, listen to other people. I've, I've experienced something like that, but I mean, it was, it was, so like when somebody's always telling you what, not what to do, but how to, maybe, maybe what to do, maybe how to do it, constantly uh, coming off as critiquing mm -hmm. a lot of the time, you know, all of a sudden they get numb to that. And if you could be telling them, and I'll give you a perfect example, I had a friend, his wife, he would always tell his wife, like, you know, hey, do this, do that, da-da-da-da-da. He kind of, like, controlled He wore the pants, right? After a while, she just stopped listening. No sandwiches, no cleaning. And and he used to come to me and go, hey, listen, because we, we were all friends. He'd be like, hey, can you just tell her, like, I'm like, dude, you're, you're a 
your fucking husband. You tell her. You know? <laughs> like, bro, not he, she's I'm not, not going to listen to me. your wife where to live, right. dude. <laughs> she's not going to listen to me. And I said, okay, well, you know, I'll say something. You know, I don't, whatever. I just, I guess as, as people, as people. What as, was it? Well, the point is, as no, people no, get. I want to know what it was. Like, <laughs> I, I don't remember what it was. She, where do you want her fingers? Like, what was going on there? <laughs> but people get, I guess, numb and tired of hearing the same. Of course. Not the same thing, but I mean, from the same. Yeah. Uh, Authority or whatever. And kids know their boundaries with you too. You know what I mean? It's like if you have a child, you know. I'm sure we all deal with his parents. I can tell tell my young son, you know, Carter, put your cup in the sink before you get off the table. You get off the table and walk away. Carter, put your cup in the sink. Carter, you know, maybe two or three times before he gets you know yoked up. But I feel like if we were at you know his aunt's house or you know my mother's house or anybody, and if somebody that wasn't him. Myself or his mother says, snap to snap to it, bro. Yeah, he, of course, you know, he'd probably grab everybody's cup. That little shit, like it, it would just be done quickly. So it, it's interesting that you look at it that way. Like they might just get numb, or they. I don't well, know, no, it's like a go. resentful thing, you know, oh, a rebellious yeah. thing almost, maybe. And, and yeah, but he, like football is an aggressive sport, right? Like if you take our little beautiful town of Gloucester, yeah, where the kids are all well mannered, right, and then we go play. An inner city team, right? And I was there on the sidelines during it, and Bro, it gets let's just say evil. Like there's that. a bunch of fast kids on these teams. Fast. Now you you guys can paint your own picture. You know, if you're listening, you know what it looks like. But getting to the they're aggression. <laughs> oh, easy. <laughs> yes. But yes. their their parents yell yes. at them. Like f bombs. Oh God, dude! It, it's right. it's more. The coaches are even a lot more tougher on the kids than us coaches oh, I'm sure. from Gloucester. Yeah, so would you say tough or just like well, vulgar, rigid? You know, like more yeah, vulgar. Yeah, unpolished might even be a good word. You know, yeah. When you say vulgar, does that well, mean like well, they're? You gotta make that fucking tackle, motherfucker. Like, they yeah, talk like that. Like, like oh, coaches well, are saying that to the yeah. kids. Oh, well, okay, well. Yeah. So, right? ultimately, and, and so we can't quite say that to our kids like while we're practicing, I mean, but at their point... Could. There would be some backlash. There'd though. definitely be There'd some be backlash. Some Tommy, backlash. please tackle him. Right. <laughs> like, why isn't my kid playing? Because uh, he's an effing... <laughs> you know? This is a fucking he's a little bitch. shit. <laughs> he's, a he's a bitch. Your son's a bitch. <laughs> you know, you know, when you, when you, you know, you got to get that message across in the same way. Tactfully. Tactfully with some of the parents because you don't know whether or not the parents want the kid to have a football more career more than the kid does. That's right. Uh, yeah, you I never thought about that, that so much. Man. I definitely you see that. See that so much because I, I hear like sports. my kid's smart. He knows the place, but your kid doesn't want to touch anybody running after yeah. him. Like your kid should be a coach then. Like or your kid wants to touch all of the kids. <laughs> oh my god, he's got to go. He's got to go there already. What? Like you think he's coaching R. Kelly or something? <laughs> Come on, man. Why do you got to bring it there? Michael Jackson. <laughs> he's oh got god. Michael Jackson on the phone. What is wrong with you, sick bastard? So that's the key of coaching. Is you got to see where the kids are. <laughs> that's the key of coaching. Well, it's it's, it's got to be like because I hear them. You know, like those parents that are just like. Digging at them, like while the game very is going militant, on, almost maybe almost like humiliating them, you know, if oh. they make a mistake or just being in their ear. Yeah. And I'm embarrassed to say, man, for the like his last baseball, not last, but second to last baseball season, I was that guy, you know what I mean? And it's like it, baseball is a very slow paced kind of sport, and you can get very close, you know, to the third base or first base where they're playing. So naturally, like I'm over there trying to give them tips, and then. I'm, I'm hearing myself, and I'm like, Jesus, fuck, like, I must be that asshole right now that's just, like, that guy. coaching from the sideline, you know, and, like, if he missed a, a ball or if he swung at a bad pitch, I'd be like, come on, man, you, like, don't swing at that, and in my head, it's just, like, I'm thinking that I'm encouraging him, but then, like, I would realize, like, man, this kid is, you know, going up to the plate, and I think he's nervous, so I change my tune now to just really be that, like, don't worry, brother, you get him next time, you know, right. don't worry, you get him next time, right. and yeah. it's weird, because... I Especially think, son to father, you know, like obviously sons, they they yeah. want to impress well, their dad. I think moms, for the most part, you know, naturally have more nurturing, you know, genes than we do, or more uh, nurturing in their DNA than we do, you know. So it's usually it's easier for them or more natural for them to be, be reserved, supportive, and just be yeah. like, "Don't worry about it," you know. Good job, good job, good try. And we're like, used to hear "You're a little mom. fucking pussy." Like, there what was the this fuck. <laughs> there was this mom at Stevens baseball games. I swear to God, this kid couldn't hit a fucking beach ball with a, you know, a baseball bat. He was terrible, dude. I thought he was up there like Sandra Bullock with the blindfold on, and 
every, like his, there's nothing, his, his form was, like, everything was terrible. So after at, every at bat, his mom would just say, like, I forgot his name, we'll call him Timmy for the sake of this. Good posture, Timmy. Good posture. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. And he didn't like baseball, he hated it. It's like, listen, go let your kid do something he likes, you know, like. If he gets into something he likes, he'll excel at it. He'll excel but and you're succeed. Just taking him to these baseball games and forcing him to humiliate himself for what? You know, because your husband played, you know, triple A ball or something. Like, what's what is it? And then you got the parents that like just could put their kids in every single sport. So every single season, the kids' knees are gonna be blown out by he's yeah. twenty four. Yeah, we hips we are blown out by forty. Wow. Yeah, we ixnade one. We were doing too much, so we. You're gonna see that. It. Yeah. You're gonna see that in like 20, 30 years. Half these kids' knees and hips are all gonna be blown out. Blown out. Replacements. Let me ask you. So, as a coach and coaching younger uh, children, how how much does off the field problems leak onto the field? Meaning, let's say if they're having a problem at home or just whatever. I mean, like you have to deal being a a coach of younger youths, like I, stuff that you. Necessarily, you're thinking, okay, this is about football, but now you're actually kind of a mentor to some degree, or big brother to some degree, to this child because maybe I don't know, his dad sucks or his mom sucks or whatever. I don't so, know. So, uh, so yes, okay. So you know, you've dealt with that before, yeah. I've dealt That's with it. it. It's you know, like it's weird because it's at a y too young age where they're like still protected by a lot of stuff, right? So. Maybe some more of the common things are, you know, we had a horrible week at school, right? Mm. And one of the things is we say is if you can't keep your grades up, you can't come here and play football. That's great. That's great that you, you guys push that. You've you got to follow, you know, the rules. Mm. Which grades? All of them? Well, just, I mean, you know. You, you don't want to be you, failing class and you're coming out here playing football, right? Right. That, I mean, I saying? think that there mm. should be kind of, you know, you should be, you know, trying to bring everything up this way. I think you, you should know? be giving maximum effort, but... Something that I'm starting to appreciate a little more is that not not everybody's brains work the same, you know. And I really don't like seeing a kid get punished. For example, if he's really not grasping math, you know, and it, but he's trying, he just doesn't understand it. I think more of it. I think more on a behavioral thing. Okay, behavior. If you're acting like an asshole, then it is. What it is yeah. yeah. And then now, I mean, now you got you know your parents. Did you finish that thing. No, oh, parents wow. that are uh, no, I, I'm still I'm still good. You know, parents might have a separation issue, right? Or a sick a mother, or, or something. a sick father. Yeah. You know, cancer. Somebody passed, and I think that sometimes the kids come in and they're troubled with, you know, what's happening to a parent because uh, they see that parent not doing well at the house, but. The parent wants to keep them moving and, and doing something to get their minds off of what's happening maybe in the house. Right. And we've had kids that have come through the program, like, you know, through my soccer or through football or baseball, where we know that there's a situation and the kid might be off because of... What's going on. What's going on. Just, like, distracted. Yeah, mostly. you know, and I have no problem pulling one of those kids aside and saying, hey, look, we're going to have a great practice today. Ass. Yeah. If you don't run that route, I'll no, but the shit out of you. You just gotta, you know, positive reinforcement. You know, like, yeah. hey, you're gonna have fun today. This is away from the house. Let's have a good Forget hour and have practice. Yeah. Yeah. And for the most part, you'll get everything out of them. That's so awesome. You kind of, awesome. you, you have to be that leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, I know. guess that's what it comes down to is a, a leadership, you know, kind of role, uh, on the field, off the field. Why don't yeah. you piggyback off that idea for a minute? Just to piggyback off that idea, I agree. Yeah. How'd you start up Big Bear, man? Like, where did that come from? When did you think about it? Have you always liked guns and liked hunting? What's So, I'm not a hunter. I've never killed anything. Do you agree with hunting? Or you, you do a lot of stuff that you just oh, have, like, have never done. Like, I'm a football coach. You ever played? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Tension deficit disorder. I've been able to streamline it. So, so I... Uh, so well, Are you... Pro or are you against hunting? Do you feel like it's oh, I think no, I think it's great. I think if people are uh, oh, shit, you want a gun shop? Why am I asking that? Big yeah, hunting. no, like if it's you like, want yeah, to feed your totally family, you just go out in the woods, and that's like your that's your refrigerator or the city or Sorry. the city. Not I mean, yet, depending We're on few, what you few eat. months away from that. Um, cannibalism. 
Hashtag cannibalism. We'd be sick if we ate people nowadays with everybody's drugs hey, that they're on. Hey, that soccer team, the Uruguayan soccer, fuck, soccer team that, that crashed in, I think it was with the Andes in South America. Where, where, the, where are the Andes? Are they in South America? Jesus I don't Christ. even know. Anyway, that, that Uruguayan See, soccer you team. You penalize them for failing geography they, um, right now. Right. Yeah, probably. They, uh, they were stuck up there, and they started eating that dude's ass. Yeah. Who was the first guy to eat? Like, how do you get to this article, by the way? What? Look up. How do you, how do you just look up eating what dudes' you, ass? What, 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 <laughs> oh I'm, I'm trying to. Fi- so I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out what you're talking about, and you're, I. The, I mean, the agree. keywords are just not working. No, no, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to find it, but I mean, explain it to him. <laughs> The how to use the search engine right now. The yes. movie's called this Alive. Guy searching no. a business in search engine optimization. He goes <laughs> eating ass. The, well, I mean, I, I start typing <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Uruguay soccer <laughs> team <laughs> and you yes. yeah. soccer, <laughs> soccer players eat ass. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, the, the movie's called Alive. They came out with a movie and it was explained the whole thing. So, and it was. But I think the first thing they did was eat that dude's ass. But who was the first guy to suggest that? Like. I'd be like, God, no, nah, I'm, I'm just going to... Are you saying literally ate his ass, like his, his anus? It was, they, had, like they, his had, they ran out of food. Wait, this was in the 70s? Yes. No, man. 72? He didn't fucking yes. toss his salad. He just... They, they were hungry. They had so to you eat something. So you said they ate him as in... They ate him as a per- You're just saying ass. Why are you saying ass? Why? Are you because that's where they ate, made they, the first cut. Oh. What the fucking... They went for butt. I would have been like, dude, nah, I'll take a shoulder or something. A shoulder? <laughs> more of a breast, man. So they ate... They, <laughs> they, uh, I'll pass on the balloon knot. You can have the fucking starfish. I'll... I'll, uh, I'll eat a... Well, so they were they were starving, and they literally were dying off, and then somebody started eating one of the dead bodies... For, to try to survive. Yeah. Did he start at the ass or did Jamie die? I mean, I don't... I it's probably like the back so of the upper thigh. Up. You <laughs> fucking made that up, Hey, bro. the There's movie, it looked like the ass. ass. All right, what so. movie? Are you sure that was a movie? Where'd you watch this movie? Brazers? Like... No. Nah. <laughs> 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 Xvideos.com. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it was so weird. This plumber showed up and I don't know. Oh, my so God. <laughs> God. All right, back, uh, to, back you, to the gun shop. Where's well, it located? On, do you think if you... Say if you're in that situation, right? If you're fucking, you know... You're on an island or whatever, dude, and people start dying. There's no food. You think you eat a person? I think you'll do. You think you'll you'll do you could eat a about. person? I think you do. Think that whole sentence. Well, put it this way: you were in the service. When you're tired enough, or when you're hungry enough, you'll fucking eat anything. I don't care what anybody says. When you're thirsty enough, you'll drink fucking piss. I don't care what you say. If it comes to your life or death or pain, you know. You'll, you'll do anything. All right. Well, nobody's going to video you. you. Except so. for jerk a dude off. <laughs> 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 two, million, two million dollars. <laughs> <He's still> coming, <laughs> but if it was life or death, like if... You all right, that's a different die, story. If you, all right. So if you were going to die and the only way to survive was jerking a dude off. So how's that uh, hunting club and what is... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? All right, now, yeah. man. So how, how did you start Big Bear? Like, So I, I was into security. Um, I was a security... Uh, I did security for the NFL. Um, nice. And that was around the time I did the sound system at Gillette Stadium. I did. A, I met a couple of the players. A player asked me to uh, come check out the house, and I met there with um, a gentleman. I can't remember his name, but he was in charge of uh, NFL security. So then he started using me to anybody that came to the team. I'd go to their house, check out the security in their house, put camera systems. So wait, in. How, how did you land the job as security? Like how? how- where, how did that come, you know? So I had an audio business. Right. So I was one day sitting in my basement. And I got a call from a guy from Florida that says, you know, can you put a serious satellite music in a sports complex? I said, sure. He gave me the address. I drove to Gillette Stadium, and there was a, um, what do you call those, temporary offices in the middle of the parking lot. And I met with two of the guys who would eventually be in charge of building the new Patriot Place in Gillette Stadium. Sweet. Sick. So they said, uh, I'm like, here. And they're like, well, are you going to put all the speakers in? I said, I can. Next thing you know, I got the job to put everything God. Nice. for Patriot Place. I didn't do anything in stadium. Right. So all when you walk down Patriot Place and there's like speakers all over the place. and Yeah, that yeah. was a sick contract. I wired there. all that. And then um, I met a couple of the players. And then the players... Uh, well, Don Davis, who was a uh, three-time Super Bowl champ, he actually married me and my wife and baptized our children. Wow. Oh, that's kind of sick, up. man. That, now, yeah. Can we just throw out a, a quick little um, shout-out? Not only is he a football coach business owner, but don't you have the ability to marry people also? Yes. That's Interesting. Cool. So, yeah. Beth, Jay... You're like uh, what, do you, what, do you, what? What is the title for that? Not a reverend. But He's a, a Catholic a priest. A minister. 
a minister. Yep, so okay. I can I can marry people. Sweet. Interesting. So I I met a couple of players, I'm doing their houses, next thing you know, like I did I worked with Lonnie Paxton, Ellis Hobbs, uh, Matt Light, Joe Andruzzi, Matt Castle, um, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and one of through one of their houses in the very beginning, uh, he took my card because I put a camera system in, and he gave it to the NFL FBI security guy, and then they contacted me. So any new player that came in, I'd go to their condo or whatever, and you know I never met Tom Brady. Uh, <laughs> you know Tom Brady never met you. I know exactly. <laughs> um, so and then in the very begin, uh, so once you start talking with the players, and it's just not like a you know, you work for me guy, it's more of like, hey, what's going on, you know, yeah. um, I was talking to a couple of the players about an investment um, and doing something in the firearm industry, so I talked to a couple of the players, um, it was Dan Copin and Joe Andruzzi, and we talked about um, first doing a gym, and then uh, Joe heard that Planet Fitness was coming in, and that, you know, that wasn't going to be a smart idea, and so... We talked about a gun range, uh, looked at a spot, and then um, kind of fizzled out. And then, but I already made the relationship with um, I made a relationship with Bevan George, who owned Big Bear Hunting and Fishing for 20 years. Right. Oh, so you you purchased it from somebody that had already. Yeah, th we bought the whole plaza plus you know plus the the business. Nice. And uh, my business partner is my next door neighbor. That sounds so bald. Can you say that again? We bought the whole plaza. Yeah. Doesn't that sound like such a bought the whole plaza. Falling ass thing to do. And then we had a fire, lost everything, and now we're coming back a year later. <laughs> was it a on purpose fire or was it a Was it a on no, purpose fire? On purpose fire, fire no. Uh, it was an electrical well, fire. Can you just make sure shop. you tag the insurance company on this one, Jake. Yeah. Fuck you guys. Listen, fuck the insurance company. Fucking thirty years ago, I don't know. Idiot. <laughs> the insurance real. company is horrible. See, yeah, wow. <laughs> bunch of scammers. They lit a match. <laughs> yeah. Juice, if I did, I would have taken the whole thing down, not just part of it. Yeah. After a so year I'll, later. I'll, forgive my ignorance for asking this, but. It's a gun shop. Yes. Is you know this ammo in there? Is that fire like extra dangerous now? Can those can shit get ignited and like how does it? Oh, like in the movies, just boom, boom. No, no. Shots fired. Like, if you took a box of ammo and you lit it here and just put gas on it and lit it and you stood right here, you would not die. Right. It would just pop in the box. Oh. Okay. It's not so, directional. So it's it needs not to be, be in it. Right. It needs okay. to be like in that rifle barrel. Gotcha. And then so it, it was more like somewhere. firecrackers at that point. Yes. Probably very loud firecrackers. Yeah. Very loud. But those guys went in, man. They went in and put so the are fire you out. yourself? Are you are you big on um, arms, ammunition, and guns? I mean, you, you I shoot all the time. Oh, okay, that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. What, what's your favorite weapon? What, what, what a rifle, a handgun, a katana. Well, <laughs> katana. Guns are kind of like shoes. Yeah. So it's like, what what are you doing? Right. You know, if it's self defense, um, you know. You like this gun, and I like this something gun. Else, if I'm if I'm out shooting long distance. Gotcha. If what I want taking down a tyrannical government. Which tyrannical government? I don't know. Uh, you would need a, a lot of cal. people. You'd use a gold scar. Yeah. Just kidding. I was I'd like to push a reference. button and just have them all vaporize. <laughs> Jeez, that's pretty dark, dude. Go big. Will Jung. Go big or go Will, home. Yeah, what's that dude's name from North Korea? Kim Jong Un. Yeah. Will Jung Un. Will. Just want to vaporize everybody. Vaporize all the dumb people. Nice. All right. So cool. that's how Big Bear came about. We purchased it uh, back in 2016. 2017 was our first year. Uh, had a great year. Um, then January 27th of last year, we had uh, a fire that started in the bait store, basically that. destroyed the entire business. Um, Can I just interject? One, one thing, we were talking earlier about the small town community, and again, being um, a member of the football community there, we were friends on Facebook. I followed the Big, ba uh, Big Bear page on Facebook, so I knew about the fire when it was happening. And it's really, like, that small town community feeling, there was an immediate, like... Response. Response and support oh, yeah. from the town. And you guys, man, you know, not to, you know... Ultimately, dude, you guys, it seemed like you rebuilt and got back up and running and stood back up rather quickly. I'm dropping a video tomorrow that's going to be basically just a montage of the last year. That's cool. Um, half the... I'd say, not even half. I'd say... 98% of all the guys who put the fire out were our customers. 
get out of here, really. Uh, Gordy, who owns Situate Lumber, was on the phone with me the next day. Anything you need for lumber, don't worry about the bill until you figure out it with insurance. I'll get guys down there with lumber. Um, f you know, first thing that happens when you have a fire and you're an arms dealer is ATF is in your place when the smoke is still... ATF, that's... That's legit. Dude. Yeah, imagine, oh, imagine yeah. if somebody was broken in. If they were broken into, what what that would be? It, yeah. can, it can't be a local response. Oh yeah, no! Right. They, <laughs> they, you know? Yeah, they took down. The fire the started at seven thirty. ATF arrived at midnight. What started the fire? Uh, an outlet. Oh, next it was an electrical fire. It was an overloaded outlet, and it just lit the whole thing up. And it was old construction, so I mean, the thing was just like a tinderbox. So wow. even though they, they, it was a six alarm fire. There was twenty trucks. When I got there, I was I was actually playing a gig with my guitar up at Loon Mountain the night before the fire. Yeah. I mean, the day before the fire. So I get up to Loon Mountain. I set up. I jam for like 400 people in this bar. Awesome day. You're also I, a musician? Yeah. So I made Jesus total, Christ. I made like 300 bucks to play. I made an extra 250 in tips. And I got out of there at 5. I oh, hit your it. business is burnt down. Yeah, it's pumped. Right. <laughs> no, I don't know that yet. I'm driving home. Fair trade. I know. I'm driving home at 295, trying to yeah. get back home, and my business partner calls me and says, "Hey, um, you know, there's a, uh, you know, there's a, uh, the alarm's going off at the shop." And I'm like, "Oh, you know, my wife sometimes puts balloons and stuff in there." So I was like, oh, it's probably, you know, nothing. Probably some balloons. They're probably floating around setting off the alarm. Yeah, right. So then I was like, "All right, well, listen, <laughs> uh, we should probably, uh, you know, just go check it out." So he drives up there, and there's 30-foot flames coming out the windows of the store. Looks like 9-11. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? So wait, was the whole plaza, the whole mall, was that? Engulfed. So other businesses, not just yours, were like yes. fucked. Yes. Wow. So we, so we, our building's kind of weird. Like, we have, uh, we have a four, uh, we got a four, um, four unit in the front, and then a four unit in the back. So, and detached. Yeah. So the whole front building was wiped out. Holy shit. Oh, look at that. There you go. Good memories from George. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so. Open that wound. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Can you, can you pull up the P&L reports too, George, while we're at it? Yeah. Like, fuck, man. All our investors. Nah, this is a... Uh... It's crazy, though. Like I said, so today, how right. quick you rebuilt. You know, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. Today, you're up and running, you're fully functional again. So the whole front building is still blown out. Yeah. We had to move to the back, and that's the new shop. Oh, that's the new shop. So where's the new shop located? On the side, in no, the back building. I'm like, the address. <laughs> like what, what? so specific. Oh, 401 Putnam Pike. Okay, all right, right. So anyways, ATF gets there. The next more they tell me to go to bed because it's going to be a, next, a long next day. So like, I go home, and I'm like, how Did you I tell sleep? them, hey, I want a full report on my desk tomorrow? No, Give me they, one of those ear things. No, they, bas that. they basically <laughs> told me what to do next. So the next morning, we, we actually had a unit in the back that was yeah. not being used for any tenants. Right. So that became like ground zero. So I went on Facebook and said, I need tables. And like every mm. soccer mom came to my rescue and we had plastic tables. I in got this, tables. <laughs> yeah. And then the guns had to come out of the old building. In, into this room so to be a, to secure. ATF's own main focus is, hey, we need to account for every gun. Yes. Everything needs secure to be accounted everything. for. That makes sense. And secure it. Yeah. So we went one for one. So ATF was awesome and they were happy. Nobody was one fucking for one shot. Like, not one gun missing. Like, not one gun missing. That's everything awesome. was perfect. And then customers started coming in like, what are you guys going to do? Wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. So after the fire or during the fire, not, so none of your... Weaponry guns were burnt or whatever, or they were just accounted for. Were they damaged? All destroyed. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, but they were account accounted for the for. parts, probably yeah. more than anything. Over, if it's if it's fire damage, yeah, right? over four hundred firearms toasted. Holy shit! Anything worth like you know? I'm saying you, you don't have any fifty cals or anything like that sixties uh, yeah, stuff like that. No, I mean, I mean just handguns and hunting rifles. Is that? Uh, yeah, but you know, we had guys that had four thousand dollars shotguns. Right. That were there on consignment. Like Mossbergs, kind of? Yeah, though, I mean, no, no, I'm talking like, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, like uh, Ithacas, which right. are, you know, over-unders that are, you know, from 1921. 
Jeez. that they wanted to get rid of and sell. We had Moses and the Gods that were like in flawless condition. Oh, oh she's some antique collectible stuff. Yeah, right. you even think about the Colts. consignment factor. You no. have people that have You're like the fire burned all my Picassos and Monets. Yeah, I, I we had to make claims so, on those. Somebody like that, that you know, they want to sell, but you have it and you display it for them to help them sell it. Correct. Yes. So somebody like that, where you know it's really their gun still until it's sold. That gets damaged. How does how does that work? Does the well with firearms that? when you come in and say I want to I want to get rid of this gun that's been in my family's you know and make some money on it, mm -hmm. you sign it off to us. It's no longer your firearm. So I'm transferring it to you. Yes. Is there any exchange of money at that point or no? Oof. So it's gotta hurt a little. So it's ours. So it's no longer no, yours. No, because I'm sure there's an agreement that when that is sold. They get X amount of money. Oh yeah, of course. And they yeah. probably have. Do they have the right to say, "All right, I want it back for no money or Absolutely. rental fee"? All right. Yeah. So, so it's not like they're at risk of you stealing it from them. Obviously. No. Right. 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 Yeah. But no, it's very this, highly regulated. <laughs> yeah. In this weird situation where there's a fire that gun gets damaged, what happens? Uh, so it becomes part of the claim. So if the insurance does or doesn't cover it. Well, you guys. Well, they do. They'll cover it. Fucking everything. Well, they have to well, be liable. They'll try for not to. Yeah, yeah right, they that's... want you to play a game. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we're finding out now. Because, like, you know, if they paid us out everything that our that our uh, claim was, uh, if they paid us every dime for what we were insured, we'd be all set. He's like, we would actually bought three more locations. We'd be well, fine. You know. Yeah. Jake, I mean, it's a boy. rebuild. It's yeah. It's a it's a oh, oh, fire. Something. Fires are devastating. Yeah, but, so, so we're, so we're guys, back. What's that? Aside from selling guns, and, and I'm asking shit. because a few years ago, I, I never went anywhere with it, but I went and I got, what's it called, a blue card? Yes. It's a permit to own. Yep. But are you able to... What happened here? You can, you can do... Um, you can, yeah, it's uh, just a little, uh, little damage we can, here. We can always cut out parts now. Exactly. <laughs> it's all right. we'll all good. Old. The old, uh, the old so, Jay, that's where you think the best option for the paper towels are? Yeah! <laughs> you see the shit that I'm really excited about? Right. I got a tech guy who doesn't know how to plug in a USB. You don't want that My now? assistant holds no, those paper towels everywhere. And resume. And another clock. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And resume. Um, so, at Big Bear then, other than just selling the firearms, if somebody like myself came in, and I say, hey, I have a you know a permit to own a handgun. Mm -hmm. But really, what I want to do is like I'd like to, a concealed carry permit. Yes, because I'm a big advocate on, you know, I should be able to carry a weapon if I'm sitting at a red light, and if somebody tries to mug me, you know, like it is what it is. How does that work in a blue state? How how are you able to assist with that, or how does how, what's that process? I don't even know what that process is in Rhode Island. So, uh, I take a safety test. So right now. Um, the un the uneducated person would I. E. go to their local police department and say, I would like a concealed carry application. And they'll say, okay, here's a packet. Uh, you have to do it in the town that you're living Residence, in. Residence, yeah. um, But because there are some uh, chiefs that don't like to give those out, Right, because they follow the other political view. They follow a different political agenda. Right, right. Those cards. Right. So they are going to be like, you have wait, to. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. A police chief mm -hmm. that doesn't believe in concealed. Ca oh, I understand now because obviously that they they have people that respond to incidents and sure. concealed carry makes them nervous. But think okay. about it this All way. Right. Yeah, if, I'm curious if, about how if, Big Bear could help with that process. So. If you're having a problem getting a... We believe in education. Yeah. Okay? So, if you want to be a responsible uh, gun owner... Right. Okay? You have to, you know, basically the follow the, laws the, the toughest laws of, you know, because having the ability to draw a firearm and protect yourself... Right. ...is a very serious thing, right? So, if you have... And your necessary. Too. Oh, absolutely. But you think that you have to go to your town, and if your town says, sorry, you got to go, we're not going to issue it to you, we don't know you, and now you have to go to the AG, right? So your town is a shall issue, okay? They mm -hmm. shall issue it. If you go to the AG, they're a may issue it. 
So they can just say, you know what, go pound sand, you're not going like, to get fuck it. fuck off, like we don't even right, care. So the, the town should just issue it. Correct. And, but if they say no, you have another layer of a chance at the AG, but it's less likely. Correct. And then it goes to the courts, basically. And then you can choose to sue your town. Right? Well, which is which is insane anyway, that you have to on. sue your town right. to get what you want done. But ultimately, <laughs> I mean, if you go through those steps, your chances are probably pretty high at success pending think about how your, much money you have to spend to get a right. lawyer to sue your town i understand that i'm not dis, uh, discounting that right. but if you did take all those steps i mean based on the laws and your background pending your background is clean you're probably going to win that case because correct th- it's at That's that point yeah at that point it's on them to prove why you can't carry one correct now what reasons i'm trying to figure this out when you say go to the town to get it is that the police station yes the chief yes so Wait, you was, oh, I was under the impression that you you were saying not to go to the police department. I thought you were going to give us some back road loophole, like after you. Oh, said, I hey, got one. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> all right, that's what we want to hear. Every, so, all, all you soccer moms, all yeah. you DJ dads, whatever you are, I don't know why I just fucking so, said that. If in Rhode podcast, Island, whatever you are, you want a gun? He's a man. Let's. So, it. in Rhode Island, if you live in a town that is difficult to get your concealed carry permit, why would it be difficult? Because, okay, so you have two different, you have, you have difference of political views, political views, and if, it's so fucking crooked, man, it is, that. it's like, it's, a, it's either it's same. okay, or it is not, like, well, you have police officers, well, I'm thinking like Massachusetts, Rhode Island, they're both very blue, I mean, right. like, so, I mean, but look at Massachusetts, they want everybody to carry, look at Connecticut, they want everybody to carry, right? right. They Rhode do. Island. Uh, okay, I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, they, they'd that... rather, they, you, in order to have a gun, you have to have a concealed carry permit to buy ammo, to buy anything. They want Beautiful. you registered. They want to know okay. who you are. Yeah, that should be the first reason to have, listen, okay, you, ha- you have a, a permit to, you know, own one and go to the range with it, but it's like, what's the first reason to have a gun? You know, to protect yourself. Like, yes. That's, that's numero uno. Like, that should be the first. Obviously. Yeah. Right. Second Amendment right. But, all right, so anywho... In, you can instead of going to the police station, if if I'm your, I'm your friend. Yes. I'm telling you, hey, Will, I want my concealed carry permit. And I'm going to say, where do you live? Johnson. You're say Johnston. I'm going to say Johnston has a very uh, long history of getting sued. Um, they were giving them out, but then they got completely overwhelmed with them. So now they're charging. I don't know. I think it's somewhere over two hundred dollars. Get out of To here. get a permit, right? Okay. What about and, Warwick? Hold on, hold on. Uh, let's let's see through this process first. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, selfish bastard. <laughs> no, I want to know if it varies. I want to know, know how do I get one. And then you can hear about an average of time. Right. right? So it could be two hundred dollars in six months. All right. That could. That's a long time. Right. So now, if you so the loophole in Rhode Island is if you have an out of state license. Yeah. Like a Utah, or New Hampshire, or they'll recognize it. They'll, so they'll, what it allows you to do is it allows you to go to any town in the state to apply. Yeah, so okay. so right town. now, if Cranston... So it doesn't have to, if it's an out-of-state license, it doesn't have to be your town of residence. Correct. So that means that Why everybody's... That me? Because then you can just... Go out of have, state? If you have New Hampshire, you're going to fill out the out-of-state Wouldn't permit. You to go and purchase no. a house in New Hampshire to no. get a license in no. New Hampshire? No, because no. New Hampshire is a cons- constitutional carry. So okay. you download a form on the their web their New Hampshire website yeah. for concealed carry. You Actually, if you this? Google uh, concealed carry New Hampshire, it'll pop right up. Oh, yeah, write all this shit down, George. We're we're about to be strapped at this fucking podcast. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, a, per, a person may carry <laughs> a concealed loaded pistol or revolver without like, a license. Hey, you guys coming to yeah. Big Bear, right? So does so it give it, you a PDF to be able to download? Look at their uh, government site. Print a few of those out right now. So Please. you fill that out. <laughs> you give them three references, but they don't ask for any phone numbers. References, just character references? Yes. Or anybody. anybody. Family, friends. B-Rod. You send it into them. Omar. With $100. <laughs> yeah. And in eight to ten days, you will get your concealed carry yes, permit. Issued from New Hampshire. Issued from New Hampshire. So now. So that's I the way that, to hold go. On, hold on. I take that, that. I have that issued carry from New Hampshire. Yeah. I come into Big Bear. Yeah. I say, hey, here's my concealed carry permit from New Hampshire. Can you sell me any, any handgun that I want? New Hampshire or in Rhode Island? If I come to your shop in Rhode Island to buy one. Yes. And you want? Yeah, basically one form. You have to have your blue card. 
in order to buy anything in my store. Okay, but I, I believe I have that. I'm yeah. Somewhere. All right, so. Well, so I can go. Come in. Just, I don't want you to be out of the camera shot. Yeah. So I, I, I can go online right now and get this. Yeah, it's that form right there. All right, so I fill out that can form. Can I see that also? Yeah, I fill out that form. They mail me that. When I, you know, I send them 100 bucks, fill out that form. They mail me that card. Now, what good is that? Where are you at now just with that card? Nice. I don't know. What, where am I with that card? You can now, with this card, go to Cranston or East Greenwich or maybe some of the other towns that are a little bit more lenient and say, I'd like to have my concealed permit mm, package. Okay. So that's not a concealed permit. This is for New Hampshire. That's concealed. a concealed form uh, permit from New Hampshire. Correct. Which will make it easier because I can go to a town with a history or it's of lenient. working with you pragmatically. Correct. Versus just trying to resist you getting the card. Right. Okay. So then they give you a stack of forms that you have to fill out. So part of the process is they want to vet you, right? Right. So when you hand in that paperwork, you want to give them a copy of that license. You want to give them a copy of your blue card. If you've taken any kind of NRA... The blue card, what is that? Is that, is that the safety? It's a handgun safety course. Okay. Or you right. can have your hunter safety course. Right. So either one of those will allow you to buy a firearm in the state of Rhode Island. Gotcha. The blue card is not on on file. If you oh. lose it, it's gone. Right. Mm. If you have your hunter safety card, you can always ask them to send you a new one. How That's long on until file. those blue cards expire, do you know? They don't expire. So if I got one a few years ago and lost it, I just have to take it again. You've got to take the test again. Well, that stinks. You would think something that important, they would register it. Or because there was no registration of or firearms. Record of it. <laughs> have a record well, of it. Well, yeah. There's no registration of anybody in firearms in the state of Rhode Island. Gotcha. Okay, now is this, this says... Um, That's pistol, a big controversial issue too, right? Yes. Yeah. Pistol revolver, revolver license. Does this mean you have the right to own it or to carry one? Carry it. Yeah, so that, that's really where the bank for the boat's at. Yeah, what about a rifle? What a, that doesn't include a rifle. You need one for a rifle, do you? You don't need anything for a rifle. You can go no. to Dix and buy a rifle. Not anymore. You can't go to Dix and buy a rifle. Not anymore. Uh, they've, no, been, they've been sued they're every. If they're sued every other day. It feels like no. They, the they, news pulled out. they pulled all their guns because all of the system. shooting or something, yeah. right? Well, yeah, it was a big political thing. That's right. Yeah, that's now right. they're failing and all their stores are closing. I was yeah. going to ask Good. what your Fuck take them. on that gun control sell. was, but I and I know it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a, as a, I have a question, as a shop owner, are you for? Or, I mean, a national registry of all guns, or I mean, no. what, what's your stance on on that? Because I feel like I feel like right now, because you were just saying that in Rhode Island. If, if, you know, a guy has a whole bunch of guns, they're not tracked at all. I mean, in my eyes, I feel like they should be tracked to There's some no level. There's no way that they would ever stop a registry or erase everybody's registry. Um, we will probably uh, end up in some form of registry here in the state. Um, we're in between Connecticut and Massachusetts, which has the most dumbest gun laws. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, with our genius uh, governor... That she's going to try to push push some her agenda is to push some of the strictest gun laws in the country, which is really ridiculous because we are and one ineffective. Of the, yeah, we, and, but we are not one of like we are a very safe state compared to everybody else. Mm. Like I think compared number, to Chicago. Yeah, like, I think I think <laughs> like we're like forty eight or forty nine for safest uh, states in the country. And Chicago is a city. Right. Illinois. <laughs> and they have the 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 tightest gun laws. And look at them; they're all killing each other. Yeah, and they have the tri the strictest gun laws, and still people are killing each other. So, yeah. you, you're taking not, guns. You're not taking guns out of the bad guys' hands. You're taking guns out, out of the good, good guys' hands. I think hands. in yeah. some places, you know, it, and again, this is I don't know all the gun laws in every state, but I bet in some places it's maybe a little too easy to get a gun because I don't think it should be too restricted. You know, I think if you can just show any, you know, like if you don't have a history of a violent crime and you know, things along that nature. Like, if, I don't care if you, you know, you uh, stole things, you have, you know, as long as nothing is violent, you know, you shouldn't be restricted from... They mostly look at any kind of... To protect yourself. They're looking at domestics. Yeah. You know, if and you I hit your wife, that. you hit your girl, you hit your kids, you're at the bar well, that, hitting people all the time, yeah, you're not going to get a gun. If you can't keep it non-violent in a domestic setting, then you, you probably shouldn't have a firearm. No. Well, put, let me give you... a. Uh, different perspective so when I was in the service I was a military policeman right we used to respond uh, to domestic violence on calls on base right and I always thought it was a good idea being on the, the law enforcement side of this equation that base residents 
let the local military police unit know if they have a, a weapon in their house. Mm -hmm. That would put me at such ease. Like if you have like an arsenal and I'm responding to, you know, you got one's drunk and you're yelling and things are being broken and blah, blah, blah. Mm. That's a scary thing to, you know, to not know. But if you did know, that's a great, that, that would be like, oh, okay, I know he has 14 shotguns. Like, we better be careful as opposed to, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to give a different perspective. Are you, are you as just a, trying to give, um, like, an argument right now for why you should register the weapons? Or why it would be okay, why you'd be okay with it? Uh, yeah, I guess. And, and I'm not saying that I f have fully thought this through. I'm just, now that we're talking about it, I'm thinking of, you know, back then, that would have been great. I mean, great. it's okay to be in favor yeah, in of, theory. Of, of, you know, weapons being registered. If right, but I might I, I might not be considering like kind of everything. I might not that's, constitutional that's, right. I mean, that's why it's so hard with with gun Don't control be to give in an opinion, man. in general. I mean, it's hard with gun control discussions in general because everybody's very opinionated, but there are so many factors like, to right. everything. I'm totally well, fine. I think against a registry. Are you even against? I don't know if you said that. But like, um, uh, do you think that weapons should be registered? I think. Well, I th they kind of are. Right, so I always thought that a manufacturer I I manufacturer makes it. It gets tracked to the distributor. From the distributor, it gets sent to the local retail stores, and then from the local re retail stores, we know who has guns, right? So if a gun shows up somewhere because it did something bad, you're able to find out who purchased that gun last yeah, legally. Yeah, all you got to do is call the manufacturer. The manufacturer will tell you which distributor sold it. The distributor will tell you which retail store it sold, and then I can go into my records and say, yeah, the gun came into me and it went to John Doe. Just by your CRM or whatever you use to track your... Yeah. So there's an accountability already. There is an accountability. So they're already tracked. Yeah, but the question is, so say there's uh, an incident where, you know, three police officers are called into a property. Wouldn't it be valuable for them to know that there's 50 guns that that property owner owns? That's well, where see, it gets to the point where the that's is, privacy issues. That's, then it, privacy. that's why gun control yeah. is so hard let because they're so. Let me, let me, go ahead. My take on this too is that we have to remember that police officers and anybody who has access to this information, they're just people. You know what I mean? They're humans like us, and there are some bad people out there. If you wouldn't go advertise, like it shouldn't be the government's right to advertise to me if Will has seventy-five thousand dollars worth of cars in his garage. So they shouldn't be able to just make it public or even government information if he has seventy five thousand of dollars worth of guns in his garage. And that's well, where the, is, the argument comes right. back though is is can I so I go to I go to one gun shop, you know, I buy this X amount of ammo. Should I be able to go to the next gun shop and buy the same amount of ammo and continue my trend throughout the state collecting a stockpile of ammo to do something? That's the argument. And I, I listen, I'm not against it for it either way. I mean, something for it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm conflicted on it. I think there should be gun control, but I also think that everybody has their own rights to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. If I want to own a gun, I should be able to go buy a gun. But sure. at the same time, if I want to have, you know, 40 guns... All the way up to AKs that are fully, you know, unrestricted or modified or whatever else. So that's where it gets iffy for me. And I love this word, but there, you've got to look at it with a certain level of pragmatism, like a realistic situation by situation. Yeah. Kind of but thing, remember, you know? reality is different depending on where you are. It's geographically. Yeah, know. and that's that's that comes into what I just said. You know, looking at looking at it case by case. There's no there's no un, like blanket fix for everything. Right. You know, there's no one law you can say this is going to fix the entire problem. But what you can do is if you have a town like Chicago or whatever the case is, if you have a town that has, you know, statistically proven it's more likely for there to be gun violence there, then maybe buckle down a little bit, you know. But if you have a state like Rhode Island where historically there's, it's, there's not a lot of gun violence, you then you can be more lenient. Yeah, be lenient, you know. There's got to be balance to it. Well, so there's, like, you know, like, so... A, well, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, as, as a parent, you know, if you know that one of your kids is a little more, you know, you have two kids, one is more mature... And he can interact with other kids fine. And you have another little shithead that's always hitting people, spitting on people, whatever the case is. You don't want to hinder your your good, not not good kid, but your better behaved kid with a strict set of rules to prohibit him from being alone without you when he does the right thing all the time. Right, that's right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I would look at it. If you look at Rhode Island's gun laws, right, they're great. I think they're perfect. You know? If you, if, do what, you just do, told me I would have to go get a New Hampshire license to buy a gun in Rhode Island. No, what's well, the same time and conceal carry? True, true. That's a different thing. Oh, yeah, so okay. you think the concealed carry? Actually, you're not. A, you don't disagree with the laws. You think you disagree with the shitheads enforcing them 
to benefit themselves. Correct. Okay. Like I th- like we should if if all the other states followed our gun laws, I think there would be a lot more safer other states than Rhode Island. Hmm. But because you can buy and fly without any kind of license, you know, just a regular license, go buy guns and ammo the same day. We have a seven-day cool-off period. So, you, what, you know, 99% of us, if we are hot right now, we might not we be hot. We want to buy a gun and we want to... Yeah. yeah, if we're not, we, there's a good chance we're not going to be hot in an hour or, or tomorrow. That's actually a really good idea. It is, because it actually and it that's recognizes a, the psychological yeah, part of Yeah, I was say, it. that's a law right. that's... That's knowingly based on how Psychology. emotional and humans are, that, and that's that's good. And I find that interesting that they, there's a law like that in place. So Rhode Island's fine. That like makes the gun sense. laws here in Rhode Island are fine. I don't think we need to change them. I don't, you know. God, I wish I wish my girl had a fucking seven day cool off period. Like, <laughs> don't come at me with some shit until you thought about it for seven days. Seven yeah. days. <laughs> like, and that Forget like I'll probably it. have the dishes done in seven days. Why are you tripping? Wow, you always think that women should just do the dishes? Well, if I'm being at... Listen, we're not going down the road. I watched that movie. <laughs> there was that movie, The Breakup with Vince Vaughn. Yeah, yeah that's it's a great like, movie. Why would I want to do dishes? Like, oh, anyway, so yeah, back to guns. Well, so there's, well, a, there's a law that was just uh, passed in New York today. So actually a few hours ago. New York. Where there was right. one of the most comprehensive gun bills that actually Fuck went through. And it basically says that uh, they're going to ban bump stocks prohibit teachers from carrying guns in schools, Dumb. and then extend the waiting period for gun buyers who do not pass an instant background I have come to check. the conclusion in my own mind that the liberal left, and I hate saying this because I don't want to get like all divisive it. and shit, but the Democrats and you know, New York, and fuck New York, by the way, number one, but like they, they, they're just Damn. so from New York. Constant, they, they concentrate on just political <laughs> moves. Like they though? totally no. forget the practicality of what they're trying to do. For instance, they need to look at it with a level of pragmatism. I get it. But like this, this abortion law that they passed recently, um, there's so many OBGYN medical doctors that are saying, you know what, it doesn't matter. This is just a political move that they're doing. It, you can still deliver the baby, you know, even if the the woman's health, like, there's very, like, rare cases that the woman's health is in danger, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, man, it just, I don't know, every time it seems like the, the the blue side of things has a point. They bring up this point, and it's like shock value. And then, all of a sudden, slow but sure, the truth fucking surfaces, and you realize, man, you know, you guys are full of shit. You guys keep putting on this fucking charade. And I hate saying that. I have tons of fucking blue friends, you know, but, I mean, it, it goes in this, this whole gun thing and them doing yeah. this now yeah do you feel like right now it's kind of like the like uh we're obviously moving to a very very like liberal extreme thing of what's being accepted and it's fragile I, we're yeah, becoming fragile we're super fragile and, and very fragile <laughs> well it's because of pop culture i mean pop culture has always been liberal so i mean like and that's what affects our youth but now really. let me ask you though like so because uh, I, I don't want to think that I'm right on everything, because in my mind, I'm looking at things logically, you know, and and with anything you, any topic that's, you know, a big, uh, a divisive topic, whether it's gun control or abortion, um, transsexuality, you know, abortion and um, non-binary sex pronoun zers and all these things that are going on, in my mind, they seem extreme, but... In the majority's mind, because you're saying like it's in pop culture all the time, you know, yeah. there's more democratic state, more democratic people in the country. Is th- like I don't know it if that's true. Me, it well, I think, makes, well, I think it, there democracy more, pe- more people dead. voted for Hillary. You know, <laughs> well, so yeah, democracy power. is. But there's no more John Kennedy. Uh, you know, there's no more Kennedy Democrats. It just seems like the ma- that's what the majority of people feel that way and accept that a little more than not accept it. So I'm starting to you know feel like shit, man. Like. To, even though it seems crazy to me, is my line of thinking wrong? Because it's like, no, to I, me, a, it's not like, wrong at all. You, I, I read a quote today that was pretty interesting. It was like, did you ever notice that everybody um, that supports abortion rights has already been born? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Right? I thought Makes it was, you think a little deep. bit. Yeah, it was, it was, it was I deep. I thought it was deep, and then I thought it was stupid because for thinking it was deep, and then I'm like, it is deep. So I have a lot of, you know, I've had my, you know, my left leaning blue liberal friends when we're debating about gun control and et cetera, et cetera, say, and they pose the question, why does a person need 
uh, you know, an automatic rifle, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have a, a, a response for that? How do you answer that? Um, how, how do you answer that? How do you... Automatic rifles are illegal. But the... Shh. So... So, All right, next question. No. <laughs> they, so the problem with a lot of those people who say completely ridiculous things is they're not educated on it. They're not educated on... It's a, is it an emotional uh, response? Is that what you're saying? Like an, an No, I take, I take emotion right out. Right. So when somebody comes up and says something crazy to me, I have to listen to what they say because I'm not going to attack them for maybe being uneducated. Okay? Right. Okay? So I can. You're not that person that goes. You know what? You're fucking ignorant. No, like I would love to talk to Gina Raimondo and be like, "Listen, you need education. First of all, you think you're smarter than the people, you know, our Everybody. forefathers who created the Constitution, a Constitution that, on your oath, you said that you were going to uphold and protect and, and protect, and all of a sudden you want to destroy it. So, you know, to think that you're smarter." than the framers of our Constitution, you're an idiot. Right. right. That's the first thing I'd say to her. Second thing, it, it would be like, let's go to the range, okay? Let's talk about guns. Let's talk about what is semi-automatic. I can go, I can run a, my finger faster uh, shooting than, than a, a bump three-round burst or something? Or, okay, yeah. right. So you can learn to manipulate firearms to do whatever you want. Right. So, you know, last year when we gave them the bump stock bill, we're like, okay, you know, go have that piece of plastic. It, it's dumb. It really means nothing. It means nothing. You're going to waste ammo, and you're yeah. going to be an idiot at the range. So, but, you know, it's kind of a bend or break, right? You don't want to give them anything, because why do we have to keep giving them something, I, right? I agree. We, go, why, we always keep have to giving give... giving up. Yeah, we're always giving up something. To so appease what, and... When do we stop giving up and say, you know what? You're on the verge of a civil war by upsetting so many people by pushing our buttons when you are the most uneducated group of people I've ever met in my entire life. And who life. are you specifically talking about when you say something like that? Anybody. Jane yeah. Uh, Gina Raimondo. Um, she. Gina Raimondo specifically. <laughs> specifically. Hey, can we see if we can get her on next week? Anybody like who talks about assault weapons. Right. Or, uh, you know, automatic rifles. Or, you know, a ARs. You know, like... The There's a lot of people that think that AR stands for assault rifle. Yes. Oh, like, jeez, God, don't I don't even don't even talk to me if you think that. Right. You know, like we have said. Josh is one of those. The military would never want to come to our houses because they don't. They're unarmed or they're they're being, um, they're outgunned. All right. They don't right. want our guns. They have guns that shoot very fast, very far, very yeah, accurate. Fucking missiles. Right. They tanks. They We're the, shooting they these this. black sporting guns. That are just a hair bigger than a twenty-two, right. right? A little faster, but that's what it is. And you can take the same gun and put it in wood furniture and be like, "Oh, that's a nice antique rifle you have there." And you know, right, it's right, the right. same gun. It's the same exact. The same, same exact, exact thing. thing. Doesn't matter what it's lo right. looks like. So it's I could do more. I could do more damage with a semi-automatic shotgun. Right. So it's about education, okay? We've all seen funny clips of these Democrats who go to the range and they're like, G -g 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 -g! you know, oh, that was so fast, my heart's racing, and, and like they put this show on, and they don't even know what they're talking about. They had, they had clips of somebody holding a shotgun and said, do you want, you know, this semi-automatic rifle to be in the bad guy's hands? And it physically shows a shotgun <laughs> instead of an, an, a, an assault rifle. That's what but, always got to me is when they say, like, you know, in the bad guy... Like these motherfuckers, like shooting people and murder is illegal, and they're already doing that. So if you make the guns illegal, it's, they're not just gonna, you know, Stop. criminals are not just gonna be like, hey guys, sorry. Well, it comes to the same it's thing that he said now. earlier. Chicago has probably the most, the toughest gun laws in the country laws, yes. right now, and right? the most deaths per whatever yeah. day. All right, so there's obviously, I mean, when you see these again, like the, these massive school shootings and these mass shootings, I can't really attest all of that to just. Hey man, it's too easy to get a gun. It's emotional these are, knee jerk. These are fucking people that obviously have something wrong with their brain. Look how something the government agencies health. failed prior to those incidents. Absolutely. How do you mean? Almost every case. Every, every case. 
a kid oh. was sick and, and or his like father he couldn't get a gun, yeah. so his father gave him the gun. Well, that's or, yeah, that's what they say first. It's always the first question is you know where did the state go wrong or you no? Know, there was there was thirty visits to a doctor and they just kept giving him pills and kept giving him right, pills. Right. And then they say, oh, and then he went to an unlocked gun closet. You're we need right. to get better All locks on these guns. These cases, man. These kids are on these. Uh, not even kids. But I feel like that's the, the common tie to everything is there's some history of psychoactive drugs. There's also an ele- uh, a legality issue of how they got the firearm. But yeah, it's usually not legal. You know? Well, like um, like the, the one down in Florida, right? Um, got, was, was told he couldn't have firearms, and then the father gives him a firearm because the mother wouldn't, you know, and then uh, in Connecticut... Same thing, mother had the firearms, and he got the firearm from his mother, Sandy Sandy Hook. Oh, that one's tough. You know, they're all tough. They're all horrible. Nobody in the Second Amendment community wants to see any of this stuff happen. And that's a problem. I I feel like when people, if you are a pro-gun rights person, you know, if you're an advocate of the Second Amendment, people naturally assume that you're okay with this. No, of course you're not okay with these mass shootings. Those are political moves. Yeah, but what you can't do is you can't hold everybody else accountable for this person's mistakes. I mean, that's like telling everybody, hey, guys, way too many DUIs. Nobody can drive anymore. You know, it's the same thing as to, to making drive, driving laws, you know? like yeah. drive, I think drunk driving probably kills more people every day than every year do. than fucking... Hammers kill more people than firearms. Yeah, so it's like, how, where is that's that fucking... How do, you, how do you rationalize and justify the thought that making it harder or taking away guns from people is going to solve that problem? They, uh, what's the benefit? Like, what's in it for them? Well, what here, the benefit from let this? me let me play devil's advocate or or, or semi answer. Yeah, what yeah, you're no, saying. not devil's advocate. So, just truth. Like, let, let's talk. How about truth. how about Pierce Morgan? Right, he argues, which it had me thinking. Pierce Morgan argues, in a country where there's more deaths by guns than any other country in the on the globe, in x amount of countries combined, blah blah blah. He goes, why does it make sense? to have more guns or be, you know, and I think about that, I guess, as a whole, and I'm like, wow. Hmm. I was like, you know what? He does have a a point, I guess, in generally speaking, but I think, you know what he's failing to mention is the fact that we have a constitution. Right. That's what separates us from every other country that has, you know, like somebody saying, oh, look at Australia. They did this and that. But Australia doesn't have a constitution. We have rules that our founding fathers like you were saying earlier, the framework of our country that we have to follow, that we believe as citizens are the best way, you know, to have a great quality of life in pursuit of happiness. Look, look real quickly what was happening when they when they framed the Constitution, right? We were getting attacked on our soil, right? That's right. And they survived it all, right? So these guys were fresh off the fields, still cleaning up, you know, fields of bodies and... They didn't ever want to see that happen again, right? So they wanted to make sure that they wrote something that would be followed for the generations ahead to make sure that that would never happen. Right. Now, if we have over nine, can you pull up a quick stat of how many guns there are in the United States? I think it's like around nine billion guns or something crazy. No um, way. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a no lot of guns. Way. I'm going to say it's 700 million. No, I'm pretty sure it's nine billion guns. I'm just taking a guess, by the way. I'm thinking that's how, a lot too. How many people how many are in the country? Three hundred million. So I think Let's you're saying that says. every person owns three thousand guns. Seven billion? That's the population of uh, the globe, I'm I saying, believe. I'm saying six hundred million. Let's see. Drum roll. Uh, so it's 2017's 393 million. 393 million. Way off. So, uh, I felt like it was that's also, Will, that's also civilian, math, civilian look, owned. I mean, there's yeah. also companies with, based on yeah. Will's math. Every person in the USA would have to own 3,000 guns. Now, that is that's spoken a by a thing. gun shop owner. <laughs> I can't wait to hit those numbers. <laughs> Come down to Big Bear, Come down well, to no. Big Bear hunting and fishing. We have 3,000 right. available. What's the source of, I mean, is that like you said, is that talking about military? Is that talking about it's law civilian? There's 300 civilian. out of. Since June nineteenth, twenty eighteen, there's three hundred ninety three million civilian owned firearms in the United States. And that's really that's what we're beautiful. talking about. Okay, that, right. All right. So, so every man, woman, and child could own one and have sixty seven million guns left over. Yes. Right? So <laughs> we are our borders are we're not going to be landed by pirate ships and taken over. Right. Because we are a well armed country. Right. Right. 
So that's well, that's the process of that. For one second. When you say it like pirates, it makes it sound like, well, duh, you know, obviously that's not hard to defend against. But when you look at it, like, with the reality of it, like, you look at shit like ISIS, like, they're not coming here. No. You know, these terrorist organizations, they might sneak and hit us, like, quick and then get out, but they're not coming here and occupying our country and fucking killing people on our soil left and right and overtaking us. And it's because of the Second Amendment right. They, like, you can't, where are you going to go? It's where also, I mean, the United States is really a hard country to take over or to get, not even take over yeah, just no to shit, invade bro, in, we'll a, in general we'll geographically right. yeah yeah you, i mean you, so yeah, that asked. that was the purpose of it but like here here's an interesting thing right. right so we're a gun shop in gloucester rhode island we used to be by a very tough biker bar right right affiliated with some pretty big names in the biker jacks teller not saying nothing Jax outlaws hell's angels so, Everybody's like, "Wow, you guys must be getting business. You're next to that biker bar." I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, yeah, right." I'm like, "Those our guns have serial numbers on them." Right. Those yeah. guys don't want serial numbers. You know, bad guys don't come to good guys to buy guns. Right, right, right. You know, so, you know, but again, you know, we're a hunting and fishing shop. You know, so we are we sell to people that are in the community that are in this lifestyle. Right. 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 So hunting and fishing is a lifestyle. And so we just happen to be in the middle of a lifestyle up mm -hmm. in our way. But at the same time, you know, when they start throwing these words like that we're going to ban all semi-automatics, you know what that's going to leave us with? really ignorant. Muskets, right? We'll right. have muskets. Is it the fucking musket? Yeah. <laughs> Boom! Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you shoot somebody, you're like, oh shit, that was an accident. Run. Yeah. Catch up to the bullet. Hit it. So, you know, gun laws, you know, it's a, it's a tough... Uh, it's a tough conversation because people have either been affected by a tragedy. Yeah. Um, but then, but then it's, it becomes now it's an emotional argument. It's not logical, you know. It's right, and it's it's unfortunate because obviously, if it happens at home, you know, like when you lose somebody to gun violence or, you know, a car accident, drugs, fucking medical malpractice, you're always going to have um, a direction to uh, push yeah, your anger. Gonna, you're going to have a direction to push your anger. Not only that, but you're also going to have a very small percentage. That's a word, way to word. I wish I had a better vocabulary. But your your opinion on the matter is not going to be. <laughs> it's not going to be the the majority. You know right. what I mean? Like your it's going to be based on a very small percentage of experiences. So I, it's tough, but it's I don't want to tell these people like, hey, your opinion doesn't matter, but you can't make laws and you can't make rules for an exception. You know, like, like for example, abortions. You know, a lot of a lot of the time, the argument is, oh, what about rape? And it's like, well, that's the exception. You know, that's less than one percent of all of abortions. Right. Or like gun violence. Oh, well, what about these mass shootings? Like, all right, dude, there's 300 million people in the country, 365 days a year. It's just a fraction. How often does a mass shooting happen? You know, we're not even how many times it's is not plane even crash? measurable. Yeah, right. it's not even measurable. So, I think that the. Um, you know, and then the argument of, you know, should guns be in school? Yeah. Right? If you're a dad and you're an off-duty cop and you want to go pick up your kid, or a, a, a CCW, you know, right. concealed carry guy goes in to pick up his kid. If anything ever happened in that school while that person with the concealed carry was in there and he was able to stop a situation, and it, it would, you would be considered a hero. Right. right. If Absolutely. you saved a whole bunch of kids' lives, the parents would be like, high five, great job, thank God you were there. But, and, and that's the other thing. It's, it's like, if you want to go online and go on YouTube, right, and search um, bad guy uh, gets stopped by good guy, they, it happens every day. Right. Rapes that doesn't make stop. a fucking right through media there's no it negative doesn't. There. It's, there's, it's, it's not, not as negative. fun to sell. Yeah. It, right. It's not as selling. It doesn't yeah, sell. good news doesn't sell. And that, that's what's sick about this country. Well, you know, doesn't it go to show, and this is like kind of taking the conversation a step forward, that we are a capitalist country and everything in this country is based upon money. It's a shame. It's, like, it, it's a shame in a, yeah, in a... Even, even the most basic mm -hmm. thing that the government... If you're, if you're any type of successful employer... You would know that your number one asset is what? Your employees. Your people. You know what I mean? Your people. Like, that's life 101. The most important thing in your life is people. So as a government, 
Your citizens should be the most important thing to keep that government functioning properly. So the fact that it's so backwards monopolized when it comes to healthcare and pharmaceutical shit oh. and it's all about profit and not what's actually benefiting the people bro that's so ass back well there used it's to be a scary. time like when doctors used to visit someone's house and their whole point and objective was to help cure you regardless today, of day yeah. it's like the exact opposite today they the first thing when you're sick when you walk into a doctor's office they want to know how they're getting paid that's do you have insurance thing. And they go through that process before you even say boo about right, what's right. going on with you. You're they like, want to know. Hey, my esophagus is falling out. Like, I yes. Can't really do this. Remember? And not only that, but once they you even go into the room and, and I, you know, it's crazy because now whenever I go into, like, let's say a doctor, they ask me, all right, so uh, what do you want? You want this? You want that? And I'm like, what? I, hey, you're the doctor. You tell right. me what I need what I to need. help my health. Right. You know, and then they'll suggest things that they get kickbacks on. I mean, it's That's all about it's money. It's so a business. It has nothing to do with anything else. The kickback. Oh, no, forget the, is, yeah, is the same. kickback. Bro, there are commercials for Zoloft, hmm. for all these fucking, like, you know, um, what's that other thing that, um, what's her name, dude? Rosie O'Donnell? No, Roseanne. She, Ambien, right? Right. So they, like, there are commercials for this shit. You know, like, advertisements. Yeah. Hey, ask This medication your, could ask cause anal discharge. Doctor, Ask your doctor. <laughs> so can I? Hey, ask your doctor about this. Like, wait a second. So you put put up this pretty commercial with this old couple walking down, living this good life. Their depression is cured. You know, there's butterflies flying. There's fucking birds chirping. And I get to tell my doctor, hey, this is what I want. You know how easy it is. If what's a doctor? How can a doctor tell you no? They're just gonna ask you the symptoms. It's so easy to do a quick Google search. Hey. How do you get prescribed? They tell you the symptoms in the advertising. How do you get prescribed? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are your symptoms this? Like, I feel like that should be illegal. That you should not have any type of advertisement for medicines to be asking your doctor. Like, you should go to the doctor, tell them what's wrong with you, like what you're actually feeling, and they should tell you what you need. It's yeah, it's like almost the exact opposite. You go in there and they ask you yeah. what you want. Dude, when like I was a kid, I, I wanted to take like I, I wanted to take Adderall. I had taken Adderall a few times when I was younger, and I was like, oh shit, like this is pretty cool. Like I was in sales, I'm like this gets me going, like I'm amped up, and I'm like, I go on Google, I'm on my iPhone, you know what I mean? You're looking at the I, hey, how to get prescribed Adderall? I look at four symptoms. I go to my doctor, tell her the symptoms. Before you know, it, dude, within two weeks, I'm getting prescribed a double dosage of Adderall because I took it a step further and said. Hey, how do I get my doctor to up my dosage? It's crazy. You know, it, it's so easy. So when oh, you, yeah. when you, and just a that's business. Always, that's always going to be there. Yep. You know, like just of of exposure and like organically to different medicines and idiots like me that want to get them illegally. I guess you could say. Well, you have to. But be, you're you're not helping when you're advertising medicines in these mega huge for profit companies benefiting off the doctors. Selling and pushing a specific well, message. We have become a society where we have to advocate for our own health care, mm. right? So your wife is in the, you know, your wife's, you know, sick on the bed. If we don't fight for her, they don't fight for her, you know? You have to always be advocating for more or right. else, you know, you're going to, I can't tell you how many times I've walked out of Rhode Island Hospital because I was there for six hours and saw six meth heads come in get juiced up out the door and I'm still sitting on a bench when my wife needs a double hip surgery. And it's like, are you, are you freaking kidding me? And this was, in Rhode Island Hospital Sad. used to be one of the best hospitals in right, the state. Right. I would drive from Pawtucket to Rhode Island Hospital. Yeah. When there was Memorial Hospital. It, right. In now Pawtucket. you go to Memorial, not Rhode Island. Or yeah. you fly down to South County Hospital because... Now, now I just smoke pot and the pain goes yeah, away. Yeah, CBDs. <laughs> good. You know me. Like, that's another thing that these, these pharmacy companies, man, and the law enforcement company, uh, not uh, companies, but agencies and um, prison systems, dude, they're really advocating against marijuana becoming illegal because there's so much, there's so less money to be made in that pharmaceutical sector, you know, and in that, the, the law enforcement sector. But I think it's, it's, it's almost like where it's, it's too good of a thing for people to be hidden anymore, you know, like information comes out and that's why obviously we're seeing it legalized, but... It's a shame that it's even had to get this far when there's something so natural and so beneficial for us, and it's we've had to basically, you know, twist the government's arm. Yeah, you know, like the the what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, not their literal arm, but the metaphorical arm for the past what fucking 
however long. I mean, Forty years, fifty years. Now, what yeah. about what about the people that are in jail now for marijuana related offenses oh, as the states released. as the states are passing marijuana laws that well, contradict is, those? Hold on, I, can you say they should be released? And, and I'm not saying yes. Listen, I don't Absolutely. think they ever did anything wrong, but. Remember, when we follow a system of laws, it's not that they're morally right or they're morally wrong. It's just the law at the time. So at the time, they did break laws. But if the law changes, should they, shouldn't that be automatically reflected, passed? you got to remember, then you laws go, are made. you got to be practical to some degree. Well, then you think about it, too. Yeah. So now you I, have... I, think, I, I do think they should be released. Well, you have, now you have a I private should, prison. In the first place. So you have a private prison system, right, where you have a private prison where there are literally Bro. statistics where they say, you know, this inmate's coming in at this time. We expect the estimated value of this prisoner to be X amount of money. And then if you're saying that the, ch- the laws are changing, there are literally lobbyists from the prisons that change. are going to, you know, that are in a business, oh, yeah. the government they, trying, to, trying to keep people locked up. Think about the simplicity of this argument. It is, hey, we want to keep these human beings locked in cages for using a plant that benefits them so we can continue to make as much money as we need to. You know, there's really no, that, that's it, dude, in its simplest form. It's locking humans and human beings in cages like animals for doing something that's not hurting anybody. It's actually helping them just so somebody can make money. That's why I, I dude, you know, me personally, I, I, that's, you know, I, I want a smaller government. Like, fuck off. Like, I, you know. It's tough. Yeah, but you want, you want a smaller government, but it goes to every single thing that you're saying in the entire podcast so far. You want a smaller government, but you also want not private prison. You know what I mean? It's all got to be government controlled in, in the long run because well, no, I think states haven't been able that. to figure it out, obviously. I, can, I think they can, I, they can do that as long as those people in those positions are held accountable. You don't need a whole bureaucra- bureaucratic process for a lot of things. Mm. You just need somebody with a brain, mm. like, you know, hey, let's eliminate... 50 of these fucking idiots because we got one fucking smart guy that's in charge and he'll actually do what he's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm ideally speaking. Oh, yeah. no, and, of course. Know, I mean, everything's situational. Based there's anyway. just more stupid people. What's there crazy are smart is, people. is I heard this on another podcast recently is when you think of, you know, the fact that weed or any drug in any way, shape, or form is illegal, these things only happen and, and laws come into place when you're dealing with a n- large number of people. Because picture you and I, you know, we're stranded on islands, just you and I. Yeah. You know, and I start smoking some shit that makes me high. Yeah. Like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, now we have the three of us, you know, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to smoke some shit that gets me high. It's whatever, bro. Like, fucking do what you do. Nobody gives a shit what you're doing. But it's weird that we get to a certain point and a certain number where now... A certain population want, has a problem. I want to control what you do now. You know what I mean? Like, now we, we're at that point. We have enough people where... I think I have the right, or some entity has the right to control what you do. Because you were the first one there. When it's two of us, it didn't matter. You know, nobody gave a shit. But now that there's a hundred of us, I can't let you act like that anymore. Because it could affect the whole. Nobody wants to work. Because everybody's smoking on the island. Well, fuck if everybody's smoking. Like, everybody's cool. Sounds like a great island. Nobody does want to work. Sounds like paradise. (laughs) Send me to that island. Fuck, I don't want to work either, man. I don't want to work. I just want to get high. Have have sex. I was going to go to work, but then I got high. So where does the the, uh, alias Willie Ways, where does that come from? What's the... Uh, From my musical side. We I, didn't uh, get into that yet, huh? My man is a musician. So, you, I had a band you? for 20 years called Ways and Means. What kind of music? What kind of genre? Uh, it's pretty similar to a Failing Sky. You heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was more, uh, we were a 11-piece R&B band with a full horn section when we first came out. Really? Oh, so like geez. Chicago, Earth, Wind & Fire type stuff. Let's wow. prove tonight. Da, 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 da. Did you ever perform down at Foxwoods at the oh, atrium? Yeah. You yeah. did? Yeah. 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 Really? They're, they're, they're big on the, the, that, that genre. Yeah. We used oh, to shit. do the old BB King room down there. Yep, yep, yep. Is that, um, is that no, that? No. Yeah, that, that where that big piano yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. There's my... So we shrunk oh, from the 11 piece. Shit. This is actually a Gillette Stadium at a place called Tastings. Who were the... Um, is that your band? Uh, so from uh, left to right, 
Actually, go right to left. So we got Matt right there with his hands in his pocket. Yep. Mike Bernier. Yep. Me with my arms crossed. Nice. Uh, Sarah Van Pelt. Nice. And uh, that was uh, Johnny Keys. Nice. Uh, he's awesome. And then down the bottom, uh, my brother from another mother is uh, Johnny Pina. And then uh, Marcus Montero next to him is, was my sax player. Oh, so this, this was pretty much the solid lineup for the... Uh, six years following the 11 piece band. So, are you formally trained in music? Like, uh, did you take lessons or was it just something that you fell into? No. And... So, I, I got in a bad car accident when I was 18. I yeah. got hit by a drunk driver and I was hospitalized for three months, broke my back, paralyzed. My buddy came over and said, Listen, you're going to be in a bed for a long time. Here's a guitar. So, he threw a guitar in my hand. So, we, he'd come over and we'd play. And then I moved out to Block Island. And I was uh, doing this DJ night at Captain Nick's every Monday night called Disco Night. Yeah. And I saw what the music was doing to everybody. So I called my buddy up who was at Franklin Pierce University for jazz. I'm like, dude, we're starting a band. And then that summer, Ways and Means was born. And that was in 98. So. Wow. Uh, that's how the whole musical thing. And so we just, I just put the kaputs to it uh, last year. And those guys are all still. Uh, oh, oh, is this you performing? Yeah. Kick that shit. Kick that motherfucking mule, George. Oh, no music. Yeah, that's what we're at. KC and the Sunshine Band. Oh, this is uh, Boogie, right? Boogie, Boogie uh, yeah. Boogie, yeah. I didn't read it. George, what happened to our volume? What's up with our volume? Turn it down so it doesn't affect it. Keep going. No, no, no we want to hear it. <laughs> that's the whole point. You think we want to... I know what he looks like. I don't think the audio will come through. Yeah, I'm not oh, sure if the audio will come through. Oh, shit, that's recent. Oh, yeah. Now, where is this? Because I only see you that's posting at the, uh, uh, That's at the Kingston Bowl down in North Kingstown. Oh, definitely. Okay. KB. I've been there a few times. Um, I always see you posting that. You do, like, a, like an acoustic Tuesday. Yeah, so I run an open mic on Wednesdays at Hills Tavern. Do you perform there? Where's Hills Tavern at? Uh, the old Sticks up in on 44 okay. in Gloucester. And then I do every other Saturday at Babe's Blue Ox up at Loon Mountain. Which Loon Mountain? So I just I've played. Never heard of Loon Mountain. Oh, oh, it's Lincoln, New Hampshire. It's the best. Well, that's out there. So I drive three hours to play four hours, and then to drive three hours back home. How far wow. is um the Hills Tavern? Where's uh, that? It's probably about ten minutes from your house. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm a douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun. We're gonna make it. Uh, We're gonna make it an effort to go see that. Sure. Check that out. We'll so after review. the fire, I couldn't uh, deal with. We'll the, review them. The gigs were so tough after the fire and dealing with putting the business back together. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of these guys are some of my best friends. Seen a lot of fun things with them, so they they continued on as a band called Mike Drop, and uh, they're slaying it now. They got a bunch of weddings booked. Slaying it, cool. So I, I actually we have a couple of uh, weddings that were booked under Ways and Means that we're gonna put the old band back together a couple of times next summer to fulfill a couple of wedding hmm. obligations. Oh, sick! And then uh, I go back on to my just acoustic thing. So cool, cool. Yeah. Do you also sing, or is it just? Uh... I just sing and play guitar. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. I go up to Loon Mountain, it's just four chord drunk rock songs and right. have a good time. That sounds pretty dope. I'd like to see that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun up there. It's fun. I like like what kind. Of, give me a couple of songs that you might sing. Uh, like sing? Kenny Wade Shepherd, um, uh, Pearl Jam. I'm like a '90s so that, like kid. 80s so or nin 90s. early '90s. Throughout the whole '90s, it was kind of like my jam. I with the '90s, man. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, you know, and I, I, I play like the Sweet Home Alabama, Sweet Caroline, get the mm. whole place up and going crazy, yeah. do yeah, some those journey. Are fan favorites. Yeah, you know, I'm there for the people. Have a good time. So. Nice. Any original music that you do? Do you, do you make songs? Oh yeah, songs? of yeah. course. Dip uh, and dabble. Know, dip and dabble. Throw a couple in there. Right. See what the crowd response is, but you know, it's. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And with everything going on, it's kind of like my outlet now. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's a, I don't want to call it a hobby. I, I don't mean to discredit it or anything like that by saying that. But it's a, it's a fucking super impressive thing, a skill set to have, you know, to be able to play music like that. Yeah. I wish I could play music. All I do is, I can't even sing, but I just talk and do a microphone. Just get on the tambourine. And just talk. Like, hey. how, how unskilled are we? Like, hey, what do you guys want to do? Like, yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> just talk. Well, no, I mean, like, playing playing the guitar. I taught myself how to play the guitar. It's just oh, yeah. something that, you know, if you want to pursue it, you can teach yourself anything, really. There's probably YouTube videos on it and shit. Oh, absolutely. There's tons. 
We could. Uh, Mari Schwartz. Once you get you know some more advertisers on here, you can start doing their commercials for them. Who's commercials? Like your advertisers that you get on. Hey, we want to do an advertising. That next thing you know, now you're doing their. We're doing spots. a little jingle. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Set up the guitar center. Absolutely. It's a music spot. <laughs> Heard Chevrolet. Yes, um, that's, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, is ready to wrap this up? Yeah, we covered. I think wrap almost the sun, everything man, under fine. the sun. Sure. Before, sure. Um, <laughs> before before we go though, um, obviously thanks for coming on. But yeah, thank first, you. You do so much. We want to plug everything that you do first. Uh, football coach. I heard I heard a new team is coming to the league. North Providence Jets. Yes, that's cool. Um, so anybody that wants to play for your team, which is Tri Town uh, Football. Uh, league, you can find them on Facebook or just look up Tri Town Football on registration. I believe is open. Um, TriTownTitans.com or try. Yes. Yeah. So TriTownTitans.com. Look up the Tri Town Titans on Facebook. Cluster Little League. I can personally, guys, I can personally attest for this organization. You know, it's fantastic. The the people, the parents are great. The coaching staff is great. Um, they have fucking fantastic uh, breakfast sandwiches at the home games. So oh my God. why are they so good? Tell us why they just real fast. Because it's early and it's Sunday morning. Usually I'm hungover. Hung over. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. It's not a donut. It's fucking delicious. It's hot and warm. <laughs> and um, then I get to announce and DJ the games when the, the home dude, games. Those, those are, are great, fun, man. Um, all right. So your music. You have two two nights a week right now that you do. Yeah. So every uh, so every Wednesday is my open mic night at Hills Tavern. Bring your acoustic. Come down and jam. So Wednesday nights, you can catch them out Willie Ways at Hills Tavern, which is in Gloucester. On, yeah, right on 44. Nice. Right on 44, nice. Wednesday nights. And the big shebang, if you really want to um, check Will out, you can probably catch him here most of the time at Big Bear. Is it Big Bear Hunting, hunting and, fishing? and Fishing? Yes, Big Bear Hunting and Fishing. Uh, we go live on our website all the time. Um, so, you know, Where can we find you? On Facebook? Go live right now. Facebook. Go live right now. Wrap that shit up. Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> do it, man. Let's go live. Let's do it. As we're wrapping up. Go live. As we're wrapping up. Fuck it, man. This is our show. No, we don't have no rules. Exactly. We make the rules. Alright, we gotta go actually. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do it or not do it. Do it or not do it. Yeah, but um alright, so while you're while you're pulling that up, so that's Big Bear. One stop shop for you guys sell handguns, rifles, everything hunting and shotguns. fishing. Everything hunting and fishing. Live bait? Live bait, shiners of all size. Shiners no, there's no live si bait at a fishing shop. Shiners of all <laughs> size. That's my nickname, the Shiner. Uh, you guys sell worms? Sell worms. Worms, shiners, fishing poles. They got everything. Lures, everything. <laughs> Where's it located? What, what, what town From is it? Revolvers to 401 tanks. Putnam Pike, Gloucester, Gloucester, Rhode Island. Gloucester, Rhode Island. All right, we're live. <laughs> All right, wait, can they find you on Facebook? Uh, yes, uh, Big Bear Hunting and Fishing. That's weird, he's on the Big Bear Hunting yes. and Fishing. Say he's like Big Bear Hunting and Fishing. 